Welcome to a well-designed business with your host, Luan Nigara. Luan has a lifetime of experience building a multi-million dollar business with her husband and cousin, and she knows the challenges you face in your interior design business. Luann brings you real-life answers to your most pressing problems, as well as practical strategies to explode your interior design business. So, let's get to the business of interior design. Hey there, welcome to Power Talk Friday on a well-designed business. If you're in the U.S. and you're listening to this on Friday the 23rd, I hope you had a nice Thanksgiving holiday, and I hope you have enough delicious leftovers to take you through the whole weekend. All righty, now, why am I doing an intro, a separate intro on Power Talk Friday? Well, because this show requires a bit of an intro. You see, I originally recorded this show on Facebook Live on November 9th, and um, it's with Joe Heck. So if you know who Joe is, you already know the hilarity that ensued on this show. But if you don't, I'll tell you in a moment about him. So here's the thing. This show is edited. The podcast version is edited. It's, um, you know, we cut out some, I cut out some of the beginning and some of the middle and some of the other stuff, but the full show is on either Facebook at, um, facebook.com slash a well-designed business, or it's probably easier actually to find it on my YouTube channel, which is on YouTube, a well-designed business. And of course, I'm sure it's on Joe's Facebook also, which is design wall. So here's the thing. Joe is the CEO of design. Design Wall. This is D-E-Z-I-G-N-W-A-L-L. This is a new social media platform just for the interior design trade. And Joe is an hysterically funny guy. He's just so passionate about this project project of his and he's all about helping interior designers gain visibility and helping them streamline sourcing their product through design wall and the thing is he's got a pretty big presence on facebook so we thought we would record this on his facebook live but as typical i only knew about three quarters of the tech i needed in order to properly execute so i thought that um, joe and i both thought that i would be launching it from my Facebook site, and I would invite him in. But here's the thing that I didn't know. I didn't know that you can only invite someone into your Facebook Live when you go Facebook Live from your cell phone. So, you know, there was like about five or six or eight minutes where I'm on the laptop and Joe is there and I can't get him in. And it's just ridiculousness. That's all I can tell you. It was pretty hysterical. So finally, you know, we figured out what I was doing wrong. And then we actually ended up recording from Joe's Facebook. So uh, it's, it's, he, I mean, anytime you're with Joe, you're laughing. That's all I can tell you. So if you're interested in the full on version of that hysteria and, and all of that calamity, then please go over to my YouTube channel, a well-designed business and watch the whole thing. Otherwise this, this podcast version is a little bit edited. I figured if you were from all parts over the world and really this was your introduction to design wall, maybe I would button it up a little bit and make it a little bit more business-like for you. So your choice peeps, whichever place you decide to do it. If you decide to listen here, you'll certainly get all the, the information that you need to know about Design Wall to make a decision if it's right for you and your interior design firm. And if you just want to crack up, you can go over to YouTube and watch the two of us. Okay. All righty. So, um, and, and speaking of that, I've been going live on Facebook every weekday and I plan to for the foreseeable future. So please follow me on Facebook at a well-designed business and subscribe so that you can be notified when I do go live. I'm usually sharing sharing some business tips or some observations or some things that happened during the day in Facebook that, you know, spark something for me to talk about. While you're at it, follow me on Windowworks too. That's Windowworks NJ on Facebook. Kim goes live every Friday at four. Um, well, not every Friday because not Fridays like today that are a holiday, but all the other Fridays. And so, and you may as well, while you're at it, follow Joe too on Facebook at Design Wall. And this way you can be in the know on everything he creates there for you and for your interior design business. All righty, here we go. Let's meet Joe Hecker. Everybody. Welcome to Power Talk Friday on a well-designed business. I am so excited to have Joe Hecker, the CEO of Design Wall, with me today. Hi, Joe. How are you? Hi, Luann. Doing pretty good. 
right, Joe, listen, we're going to talk all about your company, Design Mall. But first, I want to tell everybody about you, Joe. Even though we're on your channel, I'm going to tell everybody about you. I have my cheat sheet right here. And I'm just going to read your bio, Joe, okay? So, oh, God, to I sent a long oh. one in podcast land that have no idea why this hysteria is going on and why we are you know, carrying on like this. There is a serious point to all of this. Joe Hecker is the CEO and the founder of Design Wall, the fastest growing network for design and architecture professionals worldwide. Design Wall is the first social platform to address the specific needs of the international design community. He blends features found on top social media platforms along with the ability to produce products. Design Wall's goal is to unite the international design and products community in order to help the industry complete in a changing compete in a changing and growing global marketplace. Joe has a background in custom lighting for hotel, casino, high-end residential, daylight, tubular, skylight industries. In more than 17 years, Joe has been responsible for setting trends, developing innovations, coordinating world-class projects internationally, and driving people crazy on Facebook Live. Joe has served as head of design for Triton Chandelier. <laughs> we don't adult every day when we're with Joe. He served as head of design for Triton Chandelier, Alger Lighting, and Solutube International. He has consulted for dozens of custom lighting companies, including iWork, Spectrum, Threeform, LightArt, Sean Beck, and many others. With a passion for success and insanity for the industry and a focus on technology and innovation, Joe serves as a passionate industry advocate. I can tell you that much is true. I think I got to cut that thing down. That's you crazy. Cut down. Well, I Dang have, it. I like it, Joe. There goes our time. Here, and now everybody knows that you got some real street cred. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> when you're not working on design wall, Joe is a single dad of two sons, 18 and 19 years old. You look like you're about 25, so good on you, Joe. <laughs> this is about the time where this sounds like a dating profile. Uh, single, swipe right. <laughs> We're done that stuff. That's good. But you know, Joe, <laughs> I'm ripping this audio. We have to have some content here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So, Joe, listen to me. Um, a lot of the people on this platform right now, Facebook Live, are familiar with um, Design Wall. But we are talking to a greater audience of people who may or may not know about Design Wall. So give me the elevator pitch on Design Wall, what it is, and why, as an interior designer, I should care about it. Yeah, so, uh, and, and this is so relevant, just the other day, and I love the people over at Editor at Large, uh, I even love the, 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 um, the writer that wrote this last article, but uh, they were talking about Instagram and how Instagram's gonna be releasing, they've been testing in the fashion industry, a buy now feature. Um, and so, so um, they're gonna start rolling this out. Uh, and for, for our industry, I don't know that people would have got from that article the impact that that's going to have. Uh, this means direct to consumer. There are billions of people on on uh, Instagram, and so and we're all on there. We're in the design community. We're on Instagram promoting our businesses, and we're talking, pinning project uh, products. What that's done is that's created this giant flow of direct to consumer purchasing. Um, so for those designers that are already on house and going like, well, I'm, I'm at customers' homes, and they're standing there with their phone saying, well, I can find all this on my phone. Why do I need you? Instagram is going to become that same spot in, in, in the next few months. So uh, I invite you guys to take a look at that editor-at-large article. Um, it, it, is, it is not for us. It is, uh, it is for direct-to-consumer. It's manufacturer going directly to consumer. So uh, Design Wall, Design Wall was, um, I, I, I uh, found House years ago. I met Adi and Alan Tatarko of House. Uh, we talk, uh, they are my advisors. Um, uh, that was very much a residential homeowner's website. And I thought, you know what, for the design professionals, we need something for us. And so um, I, my aha moment was that, that people could, 
upload photos, manufacturers could upload photos to Instagram faster than their own website. And right. that designers are on Facebook, we're on Pinterest, we're on all these different platforms. We've got LinkedIn, this professional network. And so my aha moment was, you know what, I believe that the future of design collaboration is social. But it's not on all these other platforms. We needed something built for us that had the ability to pin to projects, not share with the client. This is, this is our space to work. Uh, the ability to, to find products, not just the paid products, not just the stuff that you're going to find at market, but the stuff that you're going to find at antique shows, art exhibits. Uh, that local manufacturer who doesn't even know where to put his stuff because, you know, he makes a one-off and where's he going to show everybody his one-off stuff? Uh, so it is a social platform for the design industry. It's essentially a virtual trade show where every manufacturer and supplier can all be for free. They don't pay a dime. They can upload all of their products and designers can source all of that in one spot. Okay, so let me clarify. So the thing is that your vision for this is that it always stay closed to the design community, that the consumer is not there because what you're saying is your objection is, is that the consumer is at Instagram and while as a designer, we might be excited that we might be attracting a few clients through Instagram, your contention is that for the most part, that's not the biggest driver of your um, clients, of, of earning clients and that you're looking to the future and you're seeing how, for instance, an interior designer is on Instagram because they're they're trying to share their work, attract their ideal client, hopefully to convert that client, that, that looker into a, 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 consult, a consult for them. And what you're saying though is, is that on Instagram, that consumer has the same access to you know, whatever manufacturer, let's just use restoration hardware, for example. And you're saying that eventually so many manufacturers will be there that the consumer won't need the designer from there. And so you're trying to create a place where the designer can be with the manufacturers that are trade only, and they can build and pin and create projects and collaborate, but not have the consumer getting in between them and the manufacturer. Yeah. Yeah. So on, um, uh, um, can any customer go to any website? Sure. They're going to have to go discover them. That's going to be a pain. Uh, so one of the things that, that designers do is we've got the contractors, we've got the relationships with the manufacturers. So when we start building, uh, when we start working on a project, we've got those relationships. We're not, we're not building them for the first time. Um, essentially we consolidate that information as a, as a designer, <clears throat> I'm, I've got that knowledge base. <clears throat> with Instagram and now being able to, all of it's there, all those manufacturers can be there for free. So they're all there anyhow. Um, and so is the consumer. We brought them then. As designers, we were using Instagram to, to you know, grow our following. <clears throat> so now you've got end consumer and manufacturer in one spot. And you've got all the manufacturers. They, they're all in one spot. Instagram is, is uh, offering a buy now feature. Right. So it's not to the trades, it's not to hospitality, there's no trade discounts, this is a buy now feature, direct to consumer. Instagram just became an interior designer. Instagram okay. is the consolidation of all that information with the buyer and seller in one spot. So where's the interior designer? Uh, they're not on Instagram. Uh, post your projects, sure. But, um, but as far as Instagram goes, just like you don't want your customers on Pinterest and, and finding your products on Pinterest, Instagram is going to become like that too. They just started to compete with the, with, with, um, well, and the big casualties on this one, I'm curious to see what happens with Wayfair. I'm curious to see what happens with the mine because Instagram, a behemoth just went into direct competition with Wayfair. That's crazy. Who, wait, say that again, repeat that again. Who just did what? Instagram, by offering the ability to buy now through all those manufacturers, okay. just competed with Wayfair. Okay. So it'll be interesting to see what Wayfair does. Um, uh, they were a direct consumer. 
only recently did they start doing the uh, the to the trades. That was only in December of 2015. Right, 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 right. So, 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 so this is interesting. It's an interesting time. So tell me how. Um, what is the vision for Design Wall? I, what I'm not clear on. Hmm. Is, do you want the consumer on Design Wall, but you're going to protect the designer somehow better? Okay, so you don't want the consumer on Design Wall. Is yeah. that what you? Do? We're like LinkedIn. It's a professional network. It's for okay. designers to be able to. It's like being at um. It's like being at a uh, High Point Market or Vegas Market. Are there a few consumers in there? Sure, but for the most part, it's us. Okay, and so and so <clears throat> is that the um, is is that the hook for the designer that it's like everything that the access that you would have at High Point Market, but you don't have to travel to High Point Market to get it. Well, we're actually working on a feature to drive people to High Point Market. So sure. You'd be able to find the stuff that can be displayed at High Point, and they do have the antiques building, and they do have you know that stuff. Um, and you could travel around and maybe meet some local artists as well. But Design Wall would be all the stuff you'd find at Market. <clears throat> Sorry about that. All the stuff you'd find at Market, all the stuff that you'd find at an antique show from wherever, from Africa, from China. Right. You um, know. I'm trying to, I, and I want to make sure I didn't insinuate that. You're not trying to replace a visit to High Point Market. What you're saying is it's that's the concept that we're talking about, but you could have yeah. an international, you know, when you go to High Point, you're not seeing the stuff from another country necessarily. Okay, so, so let me just recap. You are not at all interested. You're not trying to replace designers going to High Point Market because we know there's a lot of value to going to market in addition to seeing product, the camaraderie, the interaction that happens, the learning, the, the panel discussions, and just the sitting at the lobby bar for six hours and picking each other's brains, right? Okay, yeah. um, <clears throat> tell me what else if I'm an interior designer and I'm listening and what I feel like I just learned now is, okay, if I want to learn to, if I want a place to source product, possibly, I know I've heard you say it before um, on other podcasts that I've listened to you and other lives that I've listened to you. It's a place too for that artisan that is a one off type artisan makes one of a kind things. They could put that up on your site and an interior designer in Iowa, Iowa would never have known about that artisan and their product and it might be perfect for their project. So that's a way to connect those, right? Um, what else am I, if I'm an interior designer, in addition to being a marketplace for sourcing for my projects, what else am I, are you giving designers and you hoping for designers to get out of it by being part of it? Yeah. So, so when you go to, uh, when you go to any market, when you go to any of the, the, um, the design weeks and what have you, yeah, you're not going on with, earmuffs on and blinders just looking at a product from one angle you're, you're looking at it from multiple angles you're, you're inspecting it to see uh you're talking to a rep and you want to know the story about it so what's this made out of you know what's a who is the designer that designed it oh this is a roger thomas chair for and you're at thomas lavin awesome like you know so now you've got this story and so on design wall we have the image, you can also attach up to 11 other views of that product. You can also attach a story where you can put a, a, um, a profile page. You could do an editorial. You can add uh, non-searchable images so you can show kind of like the work in progress, how that chair was made. You can attach a video. And so you can literally show a person info about that chair. So that stories is meant for manufacturers to be able to quickly con convey the story of that product. For a designer, if you upload your project, then it's for you to be able to share your story of how that project came to be, who the client was, was it a family, was it a veteran? Here's a story about some of the design things that you solved. Here's some behind the scenes photos and a video so that you can easily convey how you, uh, you um, completed a design challenge with that customer. So it's, it's storytelling. And, and okay, and so, uh, if it's a place for designers and not consumers, 
why would a designer take the time? I can understand why a designer would come to the site to source product. And I can understand why a designer would love to know the backstory on the way an artisan came up with um, designing, you know, whatever they design. But why, what's in it for the designer to upload their projects and share their information there? It, you know, the only angle I can think of is if I'm a designer in Manhattan and I have a referral for a designer in Chicago and I'm never going to do it, I might know that somebody has the same aesthetic and I've learned about them from Design Wall. But I also think if I'm a designer, how much time am I spending looking at other people's projects in this environment? So what what's the hook there, Joe? Why, why that? why that level of engagement yeah so social media it's kind of like it assumes we just live on our phone right um uh, i know jeff wiener from linkedin and uh and linkedin was a resume site and when i showed up to a job interview uh i couldn't share my resume uh then it became a business networking site so I, when i was out at a place networking with people i couldn't share my linkedin profile i had to i had to look you up if we weren't connected so on design wall uh, when a manufacturer uploads, again, we were looking at Instagram going, well, they could upload really fast to Instagram. So design wall, you can upload in under two minutes, tag that chair with multiple ca uh, categories. So office, residential, hospitality, uh, banquet hall. So now I've just exposed that chair to all these different markets. When you upload those photos, you can organize them into catalogs. So what we are is we're a sales efficiency tool. At the end of the meeting, so I'm a sales rep of chairs, and I go meet with a designer. Right now I'm showing up with a catalog and a business card. We are now a digital catalog, so I can show you my catalog. At the end of the meeting, we added a little business card icon. So at the top of the screen, I can hit my little business card icon and send you my digital card with all my contact info and then a link back into my catalog. So now, as a sales rep, I can see that you clicked on what would have been that image on page 27 of my catalog. You've clicked on it like six times. You've had comments about it. And so now I know to pick up the phone and call you. On the designer side, you create your profile. You can upload your portfolio. It's a, you can consider it a portfolio. Um, you can tell the story about it. And when you meet that client, maybe you meet with the husband or you meet with the wife, well, they're gonna have to go talk to somebody else. They're gonna talk to their husband or wife, they're gonna talk to a best friend, their mom, their mother-in-law, their coworker, somebody. They're gonna, they're gonna run your pitch, your, your, what they found in you by somebody else. Right. So as an interior designer, how are you doing that right now? You're probably giving them a business card. You're probably not even giving them any kind of uh, other marketing stuff. You're maybe directing them to their website. So they gotta remember all that, Hopefully your card was clear. How do they share that when they're, you know, out to, for brunch with the mother-in-law on Saturday, you know? So now, now you've created these, these uh, portfolios. You've added stories about how you solved problems in your design. And then you meet that husband or wife or person. You send them a digital card. Now they've got an invite in. They can share that with their whole network of people. They can share it with their best friend, their mother-in-law, whoever. And then you can go to that same reports and you can see what they're looking at. Maybe when you were talking to them, they said, well, you know, I, I want to do traditional. But what you're actually see the, seeing them click on is the contemporary. And you're like, okay, so now you know more about your client. You know, they, they came to me with traditional, but they're really loving my contemporary stuff. And they're spending a lot of time over here and they're sharing that with other people. When you go meet with them, you can say, hey, so... Uh, you know, I know we had originally talked about uh, traditional, but uh, let me introduce you to some of these other products. Now you're just wowing the socks off of them. Right. And you've got the insight and they were able to share it and validate why they should pick you. Okay. So then tell me the technical of that. Since we're not, this is not a site that's being marketed to consumers, but what you're telling me is that if I'm an interior designer, I'm on a project and all the decision makers aren't there or they are there. I just want to share some like, you know, we started all talking about how this master bedroom could look. And I happen to have a project uploaded on design wall that speaks to the same thing that we're talking about. I share with them login information, uh, share with them a way that they can log into design wall. Send them a card. 
I send yeah. them a card. I send them the card from Design Wall. I send them my digital business card from Design Wall. And then what happens, Joe? They have, you know, they don't have access to five of the sections of Design Wall, like you know that the designer has. Like, is there a consumer-facing site that's that's blocked that they're blocked only to that one section? So no, uh, but. Let me ask a question. Okay, so here's the other thing. So when I'm on Design Wall as a designer, I have access to all the manufacturers and I can look at the tear sheets, the stories, the pictures, the 16 views of the thing and pricing, right? No. So, so the difference between uh, uh, me as a designer and my mom as a consumer is when, I, when I, um, I'm looking for requests for quote, I, I'm iterating first. I'm going to pull a bunch of stuff. I'm going to put it together, and and I'm going to I'm going to weed out most of it. But I want to collect a bunch of things, and then as a designer, I don't hold the credit card. I'm not going to buy now. I'm going to collect everything. I'm going to run it by my client. I'm going to get approved on it. They're going to come back with some you know back and forth. We'll get it approved, and then they're the ones that are going to uh, either pay to get it done, or they're going to pay you, and then you you know so. So as a designer, you're not buying now. My mom, the consumer, buys now. You send out requests for quotes. So we okay. don't do buy now. We right. are only requests for quotes. Okay. And so as a designer on the site, I see a sofa I love. When I do request for a quote, am I going now off design wall into that company's site and I'm now dealing directly mm -hmm. with that is company or is it happening through design wall? Nope. You're, it's just like being at a trade show. You got all these vendors in one spot. You're the designer. You're looking around. You want to talk with this vendor? You go right up and talk to them. Okay. But so we, have that request we are not happens off of Design Wall. You've just connected us, but we do our business off of Design Wall. Totally you. If you're a hotel buyer, they're going to have a different price for you. Are you a wholesaler? They're going to have a different price for you. Are you uh, to the trades? They're going to have a different price for you. Are you my mom? Did my mom slip in there and try to request a quote? My mom was suddenly super patient. Um, then, yeah, then she's going to get there. They're going to find out that she's a homeowner. They can look at her profile on Design Wall and go, oh, well, you're not working on any projects. We're going to put you over to customer service. Okay. And so when I, as an interior designer, give a client of mine my digital business card for design wall and they go into design wall at that point do they have just access to my boards and my portfolio or they can see every designer that has a board up there so um so first they don't get to see your boards your boards are private okay. uh they get to see your portfolios and they get oh. to see your about oh. section and they'll get to see your um your contact info um, and and can they go look for other stuff yes but we don't have a filter by designers so they can't go shopping other designers there's no um there's no searching for a designer on design wall this is a professional okay. network it's for you to communicate with your customer for you to source and and any of the product sourcing that the designer would do is is kind of too much work for them we're not the the buy now Okay, so, and, and you know, Joe, I'm not necessarily insinuating that it wouldn't work if they could. I mean, like the design network functions that way. You can, as far as I understand, if Rachel's still listening, she can confirm it. But my understanding is that you can direct a consumer to the design network to your portfolio, but they, they really can see everybody else's portfolio there. So not necessarily saying that there's, Look, every designer that stands in their space that has a great relationship with a client that really knows that their connection is there, you know, you're not worried about it, like that they're going to go with another designer. And by the way, my personal opinion is, is if you have a relationship with a client and they learn of another designer, whether it be through Design Network or House.com or, or uh, Design Wall, then the fact is that they weren't your ideal client anyway. So let them go. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's kind of like a well, voice doesn't want you. The that, yeah, no, no. That, I, I totally agree with you. Um, I, I think that should happen more often than not. I think that designers should really, uh, with all this competitive stuff going on, Instagram and, and all this, and, and us kind of, as an industry, really, really kind of getting squeezed out of the bottom. 
Uh, we're not getting squeezed out of the top. If you're Barkley Butera, he's he's got nothing to fear. Uh, if you're if you're fighting for the bottom and you're hearing your customers say all the time that you know, well, I can find this on my phone. Probably not your customer anyhow. Get your money and get out. Um, right. The so um, but the. I just was um, point of, of understanding how it works. So if I give my digital card to somebody and they come onto the design wall platform, I think I heard you say it's not that they can't find another designer's portfolio, but it doesn't automatically open it up and say, pick a designer. It just brings them well, to your portfolio, right? Yeah, there's no, uh, there's no filter like on, on, uh, on design network. There's a, uh, you can, you can, you, I'm a designer on the design network. And then you're put into a room full of all these other designers. Uh, right. So there's no room full of other designers. Right, right. You would have to, um, it's like on Instagram, uh, there's no room full of designers. There's not a little tab up top that says, let me find designers. So but there's you not. Can and, okay, okay. Yeah, if, like you knew Rad, if you knew Rod Gantos' name, you might be able to talk, uh, type in R A A D and then go find his portfolio. Yeah. Right. But you'd have to okay. know Rod's name. Okay. 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 And you know what? Your, your, your point is well made on, you know, we're all on Instagram and everybody else is too. It's not like, oh my God, I'm the only one there. And, and again, yeah. I firmly believe that you are right for a particular client. And if it's, it's like I use the example of dating. It's like, you know, when you're 17 years old and you're dating, your boyfriend isn't locked down and he can't like not go to high school tomorrow. <laughs> it's like, yeah. you got trust that, you know, it, you're right for each other or you're not. And when you can say, when you get married, big high stakes, your husband and your wife go out to work every day, right? If you're your people, you're your people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. It, um, and the, the, my motivation in all this was 2008, we had the recession. Uh, I'm, I come from product design and I saw my friends that owned lighting companies. I saw my friends that sold for these lighting companies. Uh, they were used to knocking on the same doors. Right. And in 2008, when Americans quit traveling and hotels quit buying, those doors weren't opening up anymore. Right. And so I saw a lot of people lose their job. At the same time, I saw Instagram. And I saw uh, other platforms where you could hashtag. So I could have taken that chair and hashtagged it into other searches. But there was, there was no real like a spot to consolidate that. Yeah. So on Design Wall, I can upload that chair. I can hashtag it. Or let's say for lighting, I could hashtag my custom light fixture, spa, entertainment, uh, movie theaters, banquet hall, hotel, uh, nightclub. And now instead of me knocking on doors, when a designer is looking for, I'm gonna, looking for nightclub stuff, type in nightclub. You get a bunch of light fixtures, flooring, all kinds of different things that were nightclub tagged. And now I'm discovered. So now instead of the sales rep knocking on the door, they're answering a phone. Right, right. Had this been around in 2008, uh, maybe we wouldn't have seen so many people uh, lose their businesses. Maybe they could have discovered other territories, other industries. And so my passion for this is, uh, and it's it, with all the stuff we've got, I, I want to see your podcast on Design Wall. You know that we're the only social platform that hosts podcasts. Um, so, we have industry articles. You know me with technology. I literally took the time about two weeks ago. I'm like, okay, Joe's going to be on the podcast. He's been asking me for three months to put my show on the uh, platform. I'm just going to show up at your home. I'm going to hide behind those plants and I'm going to be out. No, Joe, I don't podcast. Know come to my computer and do it for me. I'm such <laughs> a numbnut. I like try to do it. I was like, ah. <laughs> Well, uh, Nick May's posting, and he's got a—he's now got a person that's going to be posting regularly. Uh, Mark's on there. I—we uh, were working on an issue with uh, uploading Rachel's stuff, um, but um, no, I know. But, I, I gotta, so I got to do it. I got to do it. Yeah, I want to address one of April here is saying that um, that people are sort of conditioned to not have loyalty because of the competitive nature of online. And I just want to say, April, you're, you're 100% right. That certainly does exist. But um, Joe's point is well made. You would probably not hesitate to direct your 
a potential client or in-house client that you already have a contract with to your Instagram page or to your Pinterest page or to your house.com page in order to see more of your aesthetic and to see more of your portfolio. And I think what Joe is saying is it's that same thing. If somebody were to go to your Instagram page, if they're inclined, if they're not 100% sold on you and they're still in that shopping mode or even if they've signed a contract and they're one of those you know, people that doesn't honor contracts, you know, they can find other designers. So just by sending them to design wall, it, if you're gonna lose your client, you're gonna lose your client. I mean, that's all I can tell you. So um, I think that, uh, you know, it's a, bigger, it's a bigger issue if you are coming into contact with clients and not closing them, or you are having an experience where more than one client is engaging in a contract with you and then not honoring the contract and, and going outside of that. And that's just a different business discussion and there's solutions and techniques and strategies for counteracting that. But I don't well, think that- Well, and, and let's, say, um, <clears throat> let's say I'm April and I, um, I, I meet a client and I'm like, oh, here, follow me on Instagram. So, so could, could that person find other people? I don't think that's the issue. Um, right. The bigger issue is April doesn't get to see what her client is looking at. See, this so is what unless I... her client hits like, right? Yeah, she's not going to see that her client likes that it was looking at certain things. Right. She's not going to, and when she looks at her analytics, uh, Instagram was made for my kids to be popular. So this is why it's a branding website. I don't care if 3,000 people are looking at my thing. I want to know, did Luann look at my, right. this one picture? Right. Like, did you look at that one or did you look at this one? I want to know that Luann did that. And I want to be able to follow up with Luann. Not, right. not just I'm popular. Oh, I'm so popular. I don't, <laughs> it doesn't matter. I want to sale. I want to know more information about my client. So that's why design wall at its core, again, uh, for the manufacturer and for hey, if you're, if you're in business, you're a salesperson uh, yeah. and you want to know how to get that person down the pipeline discovered them, shook their hand. Did you give them a thing to be able to validate and refer you? Right. Did you get them further down the pipeline? Are they clicking on your stuff? Right. Uh, are you now re-engaging them to say, hey, so uh, I'd like to send you over some things. Based off of what they're looking at, you could send them over images of things that you already know that they like. Yeah, so I don't this drives on. them down the pipeline. Yeah, I don't know if April was on for that part of the discussion, and I'll just recap that mm. in case she wasn't. I mean, that is an interesting tool because what Joe had said earlier, in case anybody who's just joined us now, hi, Sandra, hi, Anna, um, is that when you do share your digital business card with a client for design wall and they come to your portfolio on design wall they can go out onto this design wall marketplace and like different images from various different manufacturers and so forth and what joe is saying is part of what he's offered and he's built into the design wall features are that you now can you have access to those analytics and so the, the example that he made was you have this whole discovery call with a client and they're talking about the traditional traditional but meanwhile you go and you look on and after the you know the last week and a half they've liked and commented or whatever the, the features are on you know all mid-century and so what joe's saying is now you can be like you know the wizard of oz and you know your next contact with this client you don't even have to say to them like i saw you you liked all this stuff you can say i've been really thinking about your project and you know I know you said traditional, but what about this direction? And then all of a sudden they feel like, you know, you're reading their mind. You know them. Yeah, you know them. That's you're speaking pretty, to their heart. That's a pretty good feature, Joe, because, um, you know, you, like you said, that's not, you're not able to do that on house.com or any of these other sites. And so it's worse, worse, you were asking about that, uh, that competition on house uh, and on other platforms. So on house, they'll do other people like this or other uh i'm sorry but if you're in my store i'm not sending you to somebody else's store you're in my store you right. want to leave my store you want to walk out the door and you want to go shopping some more oh well, you might not have been my client yet so cool but while you're in my store i ain't sending it elsewhere right. uh, uh believe me me and my development team we've gone back and forth on this and they're like joe but this would help us and i was like i don't know if you don't understand this about me i'm doing this for you guys this is 
you. You can't pay for anything on Design Wall. I'm staying at my brother's house because I'm not making money off of this. I think eventually it will, but yeah. right now, uh, no, and I'm not going like, to charge for any of these features. By telling me you don't have a plan for monetization down the line. No, I do. Yeah. I yeah. do. <laughs> I do. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I'll share that with you when we get some of those contracts locked in. Yeah. No, but, no. I like it. I like it. Look, we can, we're, we, we, nobody would sit here and say, you know, look, thousands of designers are on house.com. A design, you know, any consumer, like you said, it feeds them. It's just like podcasts. You put interior design podcasts in my podcast comes up and it says other ones like this. Oh, great. There's everybody like you. Know, but of course I'm thrilled because I think the more the merrier for my, for my personal, well, I, you know, look, so, from business model than interior design. So that podcast, I'll go back to that one. So what we're looking to do with that one is, so you go to a trade show, you don't just look for product. You're also looking to understand the story behind the product so that you can be informed and, and empowered to be the expert for your client. Uh, we also do, once a, uh, once a manufacturer, or once a designer has uploaded more than 50 images, we send out a questionnaire and we do an article on you, a uh, feature member article about you. And we ask you, what makes you different? Uh, tell us something that people wouldn't know about you. Do you you know, and your company, do you guys uh, volunteer? Do you guys, what's, you know, tell us about you. So now that designer is now empowered to now know more about those manufacturers. For you, for a designer, uh, you can share that article with your client too, and they can learn more about you. Do I align value-wise? Sure, you can design rooms, that's cool. Um, and, and you must have the sources for all this, that's awesome. Um, but who are you? Why? I'm going to spend some time with Luann. We're going to be working on this project together. You're going to be dr building my dream home. Do, do, we, do we jive? Right. Um, and so, so it's about telling your story. Our, our theme is to tell your design story. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the other thing is when you go to a trade show, uh, you're not just vision? looking at product, and you're not just yapping with each other. Okay. Yeah, you're, okay. You go to a trade show, and you're also – you're also uh, attending um, panel discussions and learning about the industry. So that podcast and those industry articles, that's, that's the industry, that's, uh, that's like sitting in on a, on a panel discussion. Okay, I was just about to say to you why, you know, look, I'm grateful and happy that you want the Well-Designed Business, well Business Podcast on the platform, but I wasn't sure what the angle was. And so it's really just to keep bringing more resources and more conversation and more um, knowledge and education to the designers that are coming to the platform and interacting and looking for the, and is it, Joe, is it, is it that you can, so say a designer has a project and she's got, you know, a 10 room house that she has to source um, or he has to source furniture and accessories or lighting for. Is it the sort of thing where a designer can say to themselves, um, I, Nancy's like, you did it. I know. Yeah, I did it. I, <laughs> Joe did it and I <laughs> trailed along here. Um, <laughs> but is it the sort of thing where you know, say I'm a tier designer and I'm going to do a work jam. You know, I know that I'm going to spend two hours sitting at my desk and really trying to bang out a lot of sourcing for all this different stuff I need. And the podcasts are living right on your site so that they can just look at it and, and hit play and it plays in the background while they are um, sourcing their product. Or is it just like a, uh, you know, this is a podcast that is interesting and valuable to you and I recommend it. So uh, on everything on our platform, it's keyword search. So when you're done, when you're uh, done uploading your podcast, you'll be able to add keywords. Um, and so with enough podcast content, we're looking to spin up Design Wall Radio. So we'll put a little icon, and it'll be like Pandora. So a designer will be able to go in and just listen to the Luann uh, uh, Business of Design uh, uh, podcast. A well-designed business. Just listen to your state. Well-designed <laughs> business. Uh, you know, channel, or they can say, I'm working on, um, you know, what are, I want business tips on how to start my business. Uh, I want, I want to learn about ballrooms. Uh, I'm working on a spa and, uh, or I'm considering going into commercial. What would that be like? So now I've got this, this, I could throw it in the background and I could get a mix of all these different podcasts, uh, podcasters, from these different topics that are whittled down to what I'm looking for. So I can learn about the industry. I can discover new things about the industry that I didn't know. So 
while I was out in Dallas, I met with a kitchen and bath uh, showroom. And they're like, you know, we've been thinking about doing a podcast, but we don't, we don't know where we would put that is the, on SoundCloud, you know, and then how would people find you? Well, on SoundCloud, you're going to find all this other stuff too. This is just our industry, no recipes, no fashion junk, no <laughs> lipstick. This is just us so that I can learn about the industry. No. So eventually with your guys' content, I'm looking to spin up Design Wall Radio so that that podcaster who's got something valid to tell the, the industry but lives in Queens, Australia, and nobody's ever heard of them, uh, is now able to discover that podcast. I was just talking with, um, I don't, so a little, I'm working on a, on a documentary with Kelly Ellis and then uh, the student, Megan, she's the president of the uh, uh, student ASID Orange County. And we're looking at doing a, um, a documentary following their journey through marketing. The market movie. Uh, we're all on awesome. a journey. What's your design story? So, so we're working on this, talking with Megan, an interior design student. She's currently in school. And I asked her uh, what podcast she listens to. And she said, oh, there's podcasts for our industry. Oh, my goodness. That's bullshit. Uh, these are students who are not benefiting from people that are in the workplace who have information to share. And they didn't even know that there was a, a resource. So, wow. so this would give a resource for our design industry globally so that we can learn about how thing, th things are being done in France. Things are being done in South America. Uh, and we can discover all this in, in a platform meant for us, for a, a professional network. Okay. It seems I, so, small. So, um, Upload a podcast. It yeah. can be well, huge. Yeah, no. And, and by the way, the technical of it seems small, but <laughs> so, and so here's what I want to know. I'm going to indulge myself with a question that's only matters to me now, but once I start on design well, and I make this account and I put my podcast on your site, does it automatically every week, three times a week? Cause I'm out three times a week upload from Libsyn or do I have to each day, each Monday, Wednesday, Friday, come in and go, okay, like, like I'm on YouTube, I, it goes, once I li put it on Libsyn, it automatically goes to YouTube. I don't have to touch it. It happens. Well, is that the way it works, Joe? Or do I have to physically bring it over each week? Yeah, for right now, you have to physically bring it over. I got a, uh, it's, it's a, it's a new feature. Um, uh, to share, though, um, uh, so we started the, the beta testing on Nick Mays, the Chase Lounge. Uh, it took me two minutes per uh, podcast to, to upload his podcast. Okay. So, uh, and then um, I spent a couple, I spent like an hour and I uploaded like 40 of his podcasts while, while screwing around on Facebook because, you know, I just like stay on Facebook all the time. Well, and I was just going to say, and it took you one minute to do a Facebook Live, and it took me 10 minutes not to be able to do it. So thanks yeah, for yeah. 200 <laughs> the episodes. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I, I can help out with that, too. I can, um, I can help out with it. I, I, hey, I, know, I, I might help do on that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the end result is, um, is that, uh, that, that kitchen and bath show room that's looking to be able to reach a, an audience and, and, and talk about their industry, a uh, stagers. Stagers are like this whole other, they, they themselves feel like they're a disconnected industry. Um, this is a spot to put podcasts and put articles and show their work and, and connect with other stagers. Um, uh, for the stager that's looking at be, going into uh, interior design or commercial design, or, you know, this is a spot to learn and grow. And it's, it's, it's the, uh, so uh, in the evolution of kind of the tech, in the 80s, we were, we were yellow pages and white pages. In the 90s, we went onto the internet and we started creating directories. Back in the early 90s, it was directories. You could search everything under a directory. Then along came e-commerce. I'm like, oh, you can buy now? So it's not a directory. I can actually buy from these directories now? Uh, in our industry, that was uh, Stacy's um, uh, Total. Okay. Eventually, the, it became e-commerce. Uh, Stacy's Total was a directory. Okay. Steelyard came along, and now that's e-commerce, right. right? And you've got Wayfair, and you've got Dot and Bow, and these companies. Right. Then you had social media. And social media, you're like, oh, so I could connect, but can I buy? 
So that part hasn't happened till now, kind of recently. Right, right. And but that buy is fairly disruptive. We are the next evolution. So we are. It's called a social market network. We're 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 part of LinkedIn. We're not all of LinkedIn. We're kind of like LinkedIn. It's a professional network. We're kind of like Facebook. I can post comments and share with each other. And um, we're kind of like Instagram. It's, it's got that visual. We're kind of like um, Pinterest. I can pin those into project boards. Uh, Wayfair has a request for quote. So we're like that too. We're all of our favorite features in one home for the design industry to discover each other, connect with each other, find out about events, uh, learn about the industry source product directly from the manufacturer design wall doesn't take a cut this is just you going to a trade show and creating relationships with the people that you you would do in real life we are working on features it's called event solutions um getting out to trade shows uh we're looking to replace the qr code at trade oh. shows yep and flip the relationship so instead of the exhibitor scanning you and then you're on my email list we flip it you scan me and when you scan me, it unlocks the products on my in my booth onto your phone. And so now you can like that pillow. You can really you can you can request a quote on this I can't I can't adult today sign. Um, <laughs> and those sales reps now get to know that you clicked on these things and that you were more engaged with this than the pillow. Right. So right. so now as a sales rep standing in that showroom, because you go to market, uh, they came to sell, you came to buy. You're having to take pictures and then take more pictures. Uh, this is now, you like that, it's now part of your history. So you can go back and you can go view your, your engagement history. You can pin into a project and instantly share with your team back at the office and start having a conversation about the I can't adult today. It could be a silly conversation. It could be a, hey, look what I found. This is freaking hilarious. And they can start goofing around about it. But you're, you're now sharing. That, that design showroom just became an interactive environment. Um, the plan for our yeah. e-commerce is the day after the trade show, we would then be able to send the, all of the showrooms an email because it's just auto-generated. We don't do anything on our end. Auto-generated, send them an email that says, hey, market's over. Uh, this is how many people came to your showroom. These are your top performing items. Here's your top performing items by category. People loved this item in hospitality, but they really liked this item in staging and, and interior design. Yeah. So now they've got this data. And then what we're looking to do is uh, we can offer those manufacturers an upgrade that will send each person that came in a, a, a custom email with only the things that you engaged with over the next six weeks. That's so now you... Yeah, you had all this fun at market. You saw so much stuff. Two weeks from now, you've forgotten all of it. Not even, not even, you didn't even remember a percentage of it. You remember it's, the emotional part of it, but not the, the thing. That's exactly So now right. six, two weeks from now, three weeks from now, four weeks from now, that, that's going to show up in your inbox and you're going to go, oh yeah, I remember that. That was freaking hilarious. I the love that. And I could... Genius. That's ingenious because we are always overwhelmed as, as enjoyable as it is. And as much as we know it's, it's beneficial to us, it's overwhelming to be at a trade show and to really take it all in. And you have to have systems for, for attending trade show, but the systems are all disconnected. Okay. I take a picture and then I have to like make a note about it. And you know, I have to a binder or whatever it is. And here you've got it all together. And then I love the part that, I get back and two weeks later, I get emails in my inbox of the things that I really stopped at, clicked on and liked because maybe I forgot to take the picture of that one. How many times have we been and we've gotten back and we're sitting at the cocktail party that night and we're like, oh my God, I forgot to get a picture of that lamp or this or that. Mm -hmm. That's pretty clever, Joe. I like that a lot. I really oh, like look, that. We're, we're, look, I have the luxury of not trying to market to a billion people like Snapchat and Pinterest and right. Instagram and all this. Uh, my, my, my people are, are me right. and right. you. Right. And Kelly Ellis is on my team. Jennifer Hauser from Wynn is on my team. Uh, Natasha Banajian uh, is on our design 
um, group. So she so from the wholesale side of things. Right. So we are, I have the luxury of not having to be uh, focus on like this giant market of people. Right. I get to just focus on what we need. And, and, uh, and then I get to protect my people, my, the manufacturer and the salesperson that's trying to sell this. Uh, they make their money off of a sales commission. Mm -hmm. And my goal, uh, it's it, it, design wall is as simple as this food on table, roof overhead. I've created a platform that the, the, the goal is those sales reps are able to put food on their tables and keep a roof over their head. The designers, this is not branding. This isn't you getting popular. This is you talking to a customer so that you can put food on your table and a roof over your head. I love it, Joe. I love it. I yeah. think it's awesome. I, I mean, I'm so- You may be way so serious on this though. I, I, I have the hardest time talking about the product like that because- uh, But Joe, well, you need, in other words, I, I have to tell you, I'm gonna tell you, I have listened to you talk about this product four or five times and there were parts of it that didn't make sense to me. And I was just like walking around going, I don't get it. And so I get it now. And I, if I helped two designers get it and two more designers come to it and take advantage of these things that you've created for them, then I did my job today. Okay. Um, yeah. But I, well, technically we did it on, on my feed, but yeah. uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to tell you what my cousin Mary is watching. And so it's make, make, making it to my people too. Um, and hi, Ellen. Hi, Liza. Um, yes. And see, Liza says it totally makes sense now. Like there was just pieces of it that, I, and, and because I like you, Joe, and I've met you and I know your heart is good. I was like, all right, I got to keep trying to understand this. Otherwise, if I'm going to tell you flat out, if you didn't bring those features to it, if I didn't meet you and know you and know that your heart was good and that there had to be something in there, I would have given up on it. I would have been like, whatever. I'm, then I'm just a social media hooker, huh? Darn it. Darn it. Anyway, no, but we were giving it, I was giving it, I knew I needed to give it my shot, the, my chance to ask my questions that were unanswered. Yeah. And so you convinced me today and I'm so happy. Um, but I have to remind you that I'm supposed to be on air on another podcast in eight minutes. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you went over. I was like, oh man, she's no, she not watching the time. One o'clock on somebody else's podcast and I'm not going to. So You're just on everybody else's podcast today. Yeah. You thought this was about you, and you're just on everybody else's stuff. You're the guest. Uh, welcome, uh, Luann Nagara, today on uh, Design Talk. <laughs> I will hijack this thing back. <laughs> I so wanted to be on your podcast. I, uh, I, um, I'm glad I don't know. talk about design well enough. Um, I, I, I'm not a salesperson. So when you talk to Joe, you're not going to get this salesy thing. And in fact, there's nothing to sell. Um, but there's, um, but there's a, there's a missed opportunity that I know that I'm missing by not talking about design wall more. I just, uh, I hate no, talking no, no. about myself. It's coming to you. I know you by design. Well, I just, it just had, um, components that didn't make sense to me and they make complete sense to me now. And I'm so glad that I had the chance, you know, because I've watched you and listened to you and others and I'm thinking, ask this question. I don't get that. <laughs> so yeah. I had my well, call in, call in from now on. Now you know how, and you know that I broadcast this, this Tuesday, we're kind of having that conversation, you know, so we put a lot of blood, sweat and tears into our, into building this thing. Uh, other tech companies, manufacturers, I was using the example in the last, uh, uh, podcast or the loss live um, that um, I've sat and I've watched designers talk to manufacturers, the, 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 the CEOs of manufacturing companies and the manufacturer will go, Oh, so we've got this product and designers will go, Oh, it's beautiful. It's amazing. It's great. It's you turn around and they're like, that sucks. Why would you do that to people? So I do you know how many people with me too? I've had people and they're like, I love your platform. It's amazing. It's going to change the industry. And I go, not in my database. Right. You haven't even showed up in my database. Right. But thank you. I, I like the support and the encouragement. I'd like you to use the platform, you know, or tell me why you're not so I can fix it. 
Right, right. No, I, I agree. I think it's, I'm so grateful. Thank you for, you know, thank you for I, you know, sharing your time with me, but for making it possible on your platform today. And I'm just being Ashley. Thank you, Ashley. I welcome you over to our podcast. You can find it on iTunes. Thanks for saying that. I appreciate that, sweetie. All right. You're going to have to add your comment with your links over back to the podcast because yeah I'll uh, to the podcast in the comments yeah so, so people... and i'll add it into the description too so that uh, i don't up and hijack okay. your podcast and then i'll try and rip the <laughs> audio and see if it's you know it's uh it's playable <laughs> so uh and i'll put it up on a power well top. i think dixie did volunteer to uh edit for free i'm pretty sure if I scroll back through, Dixie, that, that was already a guaranteed thing that Dixie will not back out on. Yeah, uh, she that she already. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for that. But she doesn't have to, Dixie. I won't need your support. Thank you. I, I'm pretty sure she did not commit to that at all. On <laughs> you. Hi, Lenora. How you doing, babe? All right. I look. Listen to me. It's five minutes. I gotta go. Oh, oh and you probably gotta adjust cameras and everything. I gotta you gotta go. readjust the set. Quiet on the set, people. Quiet on the set. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a ton, Joe. I appreciate it. And thank you, everybody else, for joining us. If you didn't know it, this was a well-designed business podcast. Bye. 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 Thank you for joining me again today for another episode of A Well-Designed Business. This podcast is a production of Window Works in Livingston, New Jersey, your trade resource for custom window treatments and awnings. Learn more about Window Works at www.windowworks-nj.com. All of our music is original music by Room 2 Productions. Please contact us if you want to learn more about original music for your business or your events.